In this video, I'm going to show you how to make white chocolate and raspberry sourdough two different ways. We're going to make a same day focaccia, and then I'll show you how to make a boule or round crusty loaf. To get started on the focaccia, add 130 grams of active sourdough starter at its peak into a large mixing bowl. Then add in 375 to 400 grams of water that's been warmed to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Start on the lower side when adding water and add more as needed. Every flour will hold a different amount of water and you can always add more if your dough seems a little bit too dry. Mix the water and starter together until the starter is mostly dissolved into the water. Then add in 100 grams of sugar and 10 grams of salt. Mix these into the water to dissolve, and then add in 500 grams of bread flour. Mix the bread flour in until it's fully hydrated. I like to use a Danish dough hook. The dough is going to look very messy initially because of the higher hydration level of focaccia dough. Don't worry, it's going to come together. Cover your bowl with a damp towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. After resting, you'll start a series of stretch and folds in order to build strength in the dough. You can choose stretch and folds, coil folds, or a combination of both. You'll perform four total rounds of folds on the dough, each spaced 30 minutes apart. I recommend wetting your hands before each round of stretch and folds. This keeps the dough from sticking to your hands while you're handling it. If you need more guidance on how to stretch and fold or coil fold your dough, watch my beginner friendly sourdough bread recipe. I'll have that video linked in the description box below. After your fourth round of stretch and folds, cover your dough and place it somewhere warm to rest for about two hours. I like to place mine in the oven with only the light on. After resting, your dough should be nice and full of air and super jiggly. To bake the focaccia, you'll need a 9 by 13 inch baking pan or you can use a baking sheet. Put a little bit of oil into the bottom of the baking dish to keep your parchment paper from sliding around. Then line the baking dish with parchment paper. I like to crumple up my parchment paper and then restretch it out. This helps to get it to sit into the dish a little bit easier. Then pour a couple tablespoons of neutral tasting oil like avocado oil into your pan. Use your hands to spread the oil over the entire bottom and sides of the pan. Once your pan is completely coated in oil, flip your dough bowl over and allow the dough to naturally release very gently into the baking dish. Next, you'll fold in the two sides of the dough that are on the shorter sides of the baking dish. Fold one side over as far as you can, and then fold the other side over the first side. Then flip your dough over in the dish so that the seam is on the bottom, and rotate the dough so the longer sides of the dough are on the same side as the longer sides of the baking dish. Cover the dough and let it rest somewhere warm for about three hours. After three hours of resting, the dough is super full of air and has stretched to fill the pan. Pour about a tablespoon of avocado oil on the top of your dough and gently spread it over the surface. Now it's time to spread toppings on your dough and dimple them in. I first added about 150 grams of white chocolate. I did a combination of white chocolate chips and a white chocolate bar that I cut up. I like to get these a little bit coated in the oil on the top of the bread and then dimple them down into the dough. Coating them a little bit in the oil helps to keep them from burning when they're cooking. I then added about 175 grams of frozen raspberries. Make sure you push some of these deep down into the dough. It turns out super delicious. Finally, I added about 40 grams of these Heath Bar English Toffee Bits. These were super delicious, but you could also add pistachios or anything else that you want. 
Because of the high sugar content in this dough, it will brown a lot faster than normal focaccia dough. So I cover my baking dish with tin foil and bake at 425 degrees covered for the first 30 to 40 minutes. After 30 to 40 minutes, remove the tin foil. Your bread should be nice and puffed up and just starting to take on some color. Turn your oven down to 350 degrees and continue to bake for an additional 30 minutes or until your desired color is achieved. Remove your focaccia from the oven and don't forget to do a very thorough inspection. I like to remove the focaccia from the pan while it's still hot. I use two spatulas and lift it out and place it onto a cooling rack. This ensures that the focaccia isn't sitting in the oil in the bottom of the pan and getting soggy. That's how to make white chocolate sourdough focaccia, mixing and baking in the same day. Now let's move on to making a white chocolate sourdough boule. To make an artisan style loaf, add 100 grams of sourdough starter to a large mixing bowl. Then add in 350 to 375 grams of water. Start on the lower end and add more water as needed. If you're a beginner, I also recommend adding a lower amount of water. Mix the starter and water together until the starter is mostly dissolved into the water. Next, you'll add in 10 grams of salt and 100 grams of sugar. Mix these in to dissolve into the water. Then finally, add in 500 grams of bread flour. Mix the bread flour into the wet ingredients until it's fully hydrated. Then cover the dough and let it rest for one hour. Next, we'll start stretch and folds to build strength in the dough. Wet your hands and then stretch and fold or coil fold the dough. You'll do this once every 30 minutes for a total of four rounds. Before your third round of stretch and folds, prepare your inclusions. I weighed out 150 grams of white chocolate chips, 30 to 40 grams of chopped up pistachios, and 25 grams of freeze dried raspberries. Try to add all of your inclusions during your third round of stretch and folds. Sprinkle some of your inclusions on top of the dough, then stretch and fold the dough over it. Then add more on top, stretch and fold the dough over it, and continue this way for the entire third round of stretch and folds. Make sure you're using freeze dried raspberries and not fresh or frozen. Try to keep them as large as you can when adding them into the dough. The stretch and folds and shaping will break up the raspberries into smaller pieces. Cover the dough and let it rest for 30 minutes. The dough can be a little bit more difficult to work with during the fourth round of stretch and folds because of all of the inclusions inside. I recommend coil folding for this round. Just be gentle and try not to tear the dough with the inclusions. After your fourth round of stretch and folds, allow your dough to rest in the bowl for about two hours. After letting your dough rest, pick up your bowl and flip it over and allow the dough to naturally release on the counter. Use your bench scraper to help you pull the dough out into the shape of a rectangle. Fold the sides of the rectangle in towards the center with a little bit of overlap, and then fold the bottom of the rectangle up, the top of the rectangle down, then flip your dough over and very gently form it into the shape of a ball. Then cover the dough on the counter and let it rest for 45 minutes. To final shape your dough, flip it over so the smooth side is down on the counter, fold the top of the dough down towards the center, fold each of the sides of the dough in towards the center with an overlap, then fold the bottom of the dough up and flip the dough over. Very gently push the dough away from you on the counter, then spin and pull it back towards you. This tightens the surface of the dough. You want to do this very gently and just a little bit. If you over tighten it, you'll tear the dough with the inclusions inside. Then pick your dough up and place it seam side up into a banneton. Allow the dough to rest in its banneton for about 5 minutes and then gently pull the sides of the dough in towards the center. This just helps to create a little bit more surface tension on the dough. 
Sprinkle the bottom of your dough with rice flour and cover it with a reusable bowl cover or place it in a plastic bag. Refrigerate the dough overnight or for about 6 to 18 hours. After allowing the dough to rest in the fridge, preheat your oven with a Dutch oven inside to 450 degrees for about 1 hour. Once your oven is preheated, remove your dough from the fridge and very gently flip it out of its banneton onto a piece of parchment paper. Score the top of the dough. I tend to skip decorative scoring on these really filled loaves. I just do the deep expansion scores on the top. I find this helps keep the dough shape a little bit better. Once your dough is scored, remove your hot Dutch oven from the oven. Place your dough on its parchment paper inside of your Dutch oven. I like to throw a couple of ice cubes into the Dutch oven just before shutting the lid. This helps to create a little bit more steam and get a really nice shiny crust with lots of blisters. Then place your Dutch oven inside of the oven at 450 degrees for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, remove the lid from your Dutch oven and turn your oven down to 400 degrees. Continue baking for an additional 10 to 20 minutes. Remove your bread from the oven and allow it to cool completely on a wire rack. The crust is crispy and the inside is soft and delicious with pops of raspberry and pistachios throughout. Thanks so much for watching everybody! Full recipes are in the description as well as links to all of the tools that I use.